Yesterday we were looking for isolation and the last we did was the trench oxi oxide isolations and uh, uh, we have now an active area uh, which is separated by a deep trench which is filled up with oxide. Now we did this last time, now I will start with today. If we are not doing trench oxide and we are doing a normal low cost process, then there is another process step is needed which is called channel stopper. This may not be needed in STI, but this is normally needed in the normal uh, isolation oxide we grow. Uh, the for example, what is needed is uh, this step is same as earlier we have a silicon dioxide, nitride, resist and we implant now uh, depending on whatever substrate we have. In this case I implanted P plus in a substrate P. This black portion is a P plus implant okay. and this resist will stop the implant elsewhere, wherever resist it will not go through wherever clear regions are there, the implant process will make the surface below P plus. Then of course we remove the resist and start uh, driving along with anneal actually and we start oxidation along with uh, driving is essentially in oxygen, so its oxide will be grown and uh, since the impurities will also be driven in, so just below the oxide you will have a P plus layer. As you start growing impurities will also start going down and uh, they will be always in touch with the oxide. So you will have a now a P plus layer between uh, below every thick oxide or fox we have created and this is many times essential in older technologies. The new technology of SIT probably does not need it as much. Uh, but older one has to be used with this, the reason is obvious. If you are drawn, I will just show you this formulation, I will create clear it why I am saying. Repeat, I am trying to create a P plus region below thick oxides. Now we are not, uh, I do not know whether the design course has started layouts, hopefully something they might have shown. So in the layout of a circuit, when we come for a mask, uh, something this formula will come back to it just see this, if you draw the figure I will just first explain and then we will come back to these numbers. So I repeat this process is necessary only if this kind of isolation is provided. If you have STI then you do not need this uh, implants. Now why this word channel stopper okay and that is something I will like to explain. To some extent this question was asked in the exam indirectly okay, in the mid okay. Is it okay? This is standard. Once you know this, you just get thick oxide. This we have done yesterday. Only thing is now a P plus region is below all foxes, all fox regions. Why it is called fox? The larger area of the wafer is essentially a thicker oxide everywhere except the place where transistors are coming. Therefore, it is called field oxide. So let us quickly, we will come back to this sheet again. What is happening, of course, I do not have colors, but let us take, this is your drain of the transistor and this is your source of the next transistor. That is D1. Essentially, I am saying when I make a transistor here, there will be drain, source, drain, source, and there will be oxide, there will be source drain, source drain. So, between drain 1 and S2, there is a thick oxide. You can see this, this thick oxide is sitting between the drain of 1 to the source of 1. Okay. So, essentially, this region is thick oxide everywhere. And since metal has to run except 
the place where transistors are because it should not touch any source drain, it is called runner. If metal is running, interconnect is running, so it may run, for example, in between like this, it may go ahead also. This is metal. Since below metal there is a thick oxide, below metal there is a thick oxide, so it isolates itself from the transistor regions. Okay. However, there is an issue here. Okay. The issue starts, you, are, you understood what I said? I have two transistors separated by thick oxide and in thick oxide wherever I have thick oxide I run the metal. So I run the metal on the thick oxide but it created some problems. If I have a metal line here okay, and this was my source drains, okay, then I figure out whenever metal receives highest voltage VDD, the signal has the highest value, then this is please remember this is oxide, this is substrate concentration. So this is metal oxide semiconductor, okay, metal oxide semiconductor. So there is a capacitor formed there. Okay, with thicker oxide. If this oxide quality is not good enough, the doping is not large enough, then if you look at the expression for threshold, it is 2 phi f plus phi m s minus q ox by c ox which is q ox for this may be dash I should put for field oxide plus the doping of substrate. Okay. However, if this two values are such that it does not become large enough positive value, okay. How much large it should have? At least cross VDD, okay. The threshold of the so this is called field transistor. This transistor is called field transistor which is built in, nothing can be done on that. So if the threshold of a field transistor is less than VDD, which can happen depending on the oxide charges, depending on the dopings you start with, then the inversion below this will start, the metal will invert the field oxide as well. So if there is, assuming right now there was no P plus, this drain through a channel, field channel will connect to the source of the next transistor, okay. So it is shorting the two channels, okay, it is shorting the two channels and why it can happen if the VTF for this thick oxide is not large enough, larger than the VDD, then this process and typically VDD is not the only signal. What is the maximum signal one line receives if the power supply is VDD? I repeat, I have a signal going on a metal line 0 to 1, I shift, how much is the maximum voltage a line will see? It will actually see a transient depending on the inductance of the wire of the metal line, LDI by DT will be the large amount of voltage will create and 2 VDD is the possibility depending on of course zeta as the we call. And it can even sometimes if there is a capacity effect it can even boost further bootstraps. So the safest VTF is 3 times the VDD but the minimum you should try is twice the VDD. Is that correct? The minimum VTF voltage required for safe operation is 2 VDD. Now if I want to increase VT, how do I do increase the VT in this function? Phi ms increase but it is log term, so it does not increase the value of phi ms is 0 0.6, 0 0.65, 0 0.68, it will go as much as 0 0.04 volts maximum change. The only thing I can change is the bulk charges, the, the doping Q and AXD, okay. So if I have to increase any, but I do not want the rest of the places uh, that doping should go, I only want the field threshold to be higher. So wherever field was there, I put a P plus implant everywhere, which will increase the field threshold of this so called parasitic transistor larger than. VDD. Is that word clear? So, yes. Sir, 
except for the transistor the field oxide is going to come everywhere. So, wherever field oxide is going to come below that it should be have a p plus ok. You can see here there are three regions all three regions there is a p plus oxide is going to come here, here, here wherever there is a field oxide below that there should be a channel stop and that is why I call channel stopper. What this channel over stopper means? This channel does not get connected to this channel and it stops ok because of this transistor does not turn on ok. This is essentially is called channel stopper implant. This is as I say in S, uh, why I say in SIT we do not do so much because SIT is very deep relatively to the source drain. So, it is unlikely that the channel will go all the way down and get it connected ok, Imp not impossible but difficult. So, once a SIT is a good isolation you do not need channel stoppers as much as you need for normal this kind of uh, isolation which was the old technique and uh, everyone till 90 nanometer everyone was using this only ok, below 90 only we went for SIT. So, this how do I get the VTF extra? You know what are the bulk charges? Whatever is QNA XD plus whatever dose you are going to put through implant. Anyway, dose is per unit area, this charge is also per unit area. Is that correct? Q into dose is QB dash or a Q implant. So, I know this because I am fixing through implant how much I want. This of course, without the, if I do not put it, I said this is a VTF and if I put that, it is a new VTF dash. The subtraction is without P plus and with P plus, this is Q implant by C ox. Is that correct? And this is minus because it is a negative charge will come. So, it is essentially plus value will appear. So, with this value is essentially the additional threshold which you want to add to the field transistor threshold which you would have got otherwise if there is no channel stopper. And this means the dose can be now decided by how much additional VT you want from the only earlier one to add that much dose implant here. So, it will be 2 VTD if you want adjust VTF whatever initial was see that it in increases to 2 VTF and that a 2 VTD and actually find the dose. So, implant dose is decided by the choice of VTF you make decision. You want 3 VDD you may have to put higher implants ok, much more dose you need ok. But at least 2 VDD should be safer ok. I repeat in circuits uh, particularly digital circuits the transients actually are more worrisome than the because DC we hardly care 1 and 0 if it is there who cares only when it makes transition the issue starts ok. So, think of situation that in transition circuit should still behave ok. In the case of analog also there is a issue but maybe some other day maybe next semester course if some of you take where I will teach uh, mix signals design then you see what is the why even there the analog part also has a transient issue okay. particularly if I am doing A to D converters ok. okay so, now I start so far we have done it now I will follow whatever process steps given in the book and uh, uh, my acknowledgement to Jim uh, for allowing me to copy without his knowledge ok. Uh, of course, similar slides are available from MIT. A uh, course was uh, normally given by Miss Judith Hoyt and uh, Mrs. Judith Hoyt. She is also a professor. All of them now work on nano sensors, okay, including Anand Ch Chandrakasan and others. So, these people have their old courses. You can also go and access to their, these are open courses. So, it is not no passwords. Okay. okay so, I just because this is given in a book, so I thought that I should inform that this is standard thing which is available in books itself or in the net itself. So, the process step which we are going through now is called 16 mass CMOS process and of course, this is a very old slide 
even in his book of 2009 he has given the same slide, so I have not changed. Okay. You can see from here, this is one transistor shown here, uh, this is your starting material, then this is your isolation B, this is yellow is your isolations. You can see here is also a deep trench oxide is there, but this is not for isolation. What is it? It is a DRAM, it is a DRAM capacitor, okay. trench. Then there is a well doping C, green one, we will do that now, followed by channel surface preparation. Then we have channel doping and channel strains, silicon germanium if you add. and uh, then you have gate stack and spacers, spacer that is the major process step. Please remember this someone should the other day was asking the spacer is not only for one reason actually spacer is a good thing and spacer is a bad thing. So too much spacer thicknesses may worry you too much, lesser spacer may even worry is more than that. So spacer decision no, and spacer variations because on a wafer this is very difficult to maintain side walls. So the major reliability issue in all the side walls is the spacer how do you create. So there are normal processes may one step we do, but nowadays we need four steps to actually create accurate spacers, okay. So maybe after this whole course last day I will show you what is the spacer technology which itself is a game now, okay. Okay, so then you make contacts by opening silicon and gate. And uh, of course, as I said, this is a DRAM capacitor, this may be a resistor. This is also a, there is something called ferroelectric RAMs, FE RAMs. So there is also a finger kind of mass structure which is created for FE RAMs, okay. And of course, there is a thin oxide which is your gate, which may be not necessarily silicon dioxide, but can be silicon nitride or can be any other high K, any other IK. Okay, so this is uh, this. Uh, if you are really interested in technology, some way there is a body which is ITRS, as the word says, International Technology Roadmap of Semiconductor. There is a huge body, some 150 people work for it, various companies, academics, and they predict what is the present, what they actually first figure out where is the technology now for each kinds of devices, DRAM, for all kinds and then they predict for the next year. So they decide these are the problems and how will they possibly get solved and next year what is expected, okay. That is called roadmap, okay. So this 2014 roadmap is already out. So now you can go and look at what is 2014 people are, have got through and what is expected in 2015. Okay, what are the bottlenecks even in 14, which they will solve probably. If it does not happen next year, they say, okay, we could not solve, so that is the present state. And 2016 will have the last 15 copy, okay. but that keeps doing. So this is of course, as I say, standard this, uh, ITRS net is the famous net uh, web page for that. Go for it. Only thing give a year 2014, 2000, otherwise it will show you 2006, 5, any number, any era. So for every this, you ask for slash 2014, 2012, okay. But 2012 to 14 is not very much change, 13, 14, but 15 they expect now, we do not know whether, yes or no. Okay, so this is what I want to make. This is the ultimate, what a mass transistor I want to make one N-channel device and one P-channel device for a CMOS, okay. For the N-MOS I only need one, one of them and uh, of course there in some cases we will make resistors to will require resistor implants but right now I assume there are no resistors and capacitors are always there MOS capacitor. Then there are junctions, so I have a junction capacitor. So I do not need additional processing for making capacitors. But resistors I may have to, okay. And also if inductance then I will really be in trouble because I will use a huge area to create the coils, okay. okay so we start with uh, yesterday, okay this is again a final version of what is typical CMOS will look like. 
this is only two metal layer process the current trend is seven metals okay so this is metal one then there is a metal two then there will be isolation metal three metal four metal five metal six and metal seven okay our ultimate aim is metal 12 okay but i think i don't know whether we reach there are the issues of thicknesses the problem is where should we keep vdd or where should your signal should run maximum how much capacitance between the metal layers okay so there are too many issues because if you increase r then whole your speed goes you are looking 6 gigahertz from the transistor and the interconnect is actually making it 2 gigahertz so what is the point in making transistor 6 gigahertz so there are issues so this process number of metal layers and their contacts the making a first layer transistor is called front end process and the second onwards or even at least third onwards whatever metal interconnects you create that is called back end process okay and back end process actually decides the circuit okay. how how it to be connected okay front end uh, processes designs the transistors back end uh, these are called interconnects so major research right now is in interconnect not so much in transistors of course finfet is not no, now known for long so there is not much change has happened from finfet up 2010 to 2014 okay. okay so this is not a finfet this is a normal mass transistor there is a p channel device and there is an n channel device this is the gate oxide this is the inversion channel in between n and p uh, where this are the, uh, okay this please remember since i have i need one n channel device and one p channel device so i must cannot have same substrate so i create a separate regions for each transistor so they are called wells so for a p channel device i should have a n substrate so n well for a n channel device i need a p substrate so there is a p well okay this is deeper area down at least okay that is called well, well means deep enough compared to whatever you are doing at the surface compared to that at least 4 times it should be deeper okay. This is essentially uh, adjusting the capacitance and that decides the speed. So all these games are related to speed all, all of us are now trying to see what parasitics we get which reduces my speed. So all my effort in technology is to improve speed is that clear so why technology is varying or why everyone has to do something more is to see that the transistor speeds are not limited by interconnects or not limited by some other side parasitics okay so that is something very important so this is as i say a typical okay this red ones let's say i want to connect metal 2 to metal 1 so you can see I have connected some red portion this is actually tungsten okay. it is called tungsten stub okay. tungsten has its own problems so it should be guarded by something so there is a clad around tungsten stub okay you can see this bleach it can be titanium nitride we will see this process anyway these blacks are metals so metal 1 is to be connected to metal 2 so in this oxide i must first create a hole via as the word is via so i must create a via down and then fill it up because i want contact from the both bottom and this now the way it is shown here is not true because once normally wherever gate will appear that contact should not be there should not be any contact above it so it should be always displaced contact so you are here then you move up then you move up and that is why areas are required because you will not put one over the other you will keep moving okay. So you can see from here there is a contact to the drain of this transistor this is the source this is also the drain of the p channel device this is p channel device what will this contact if it is a source where it will go in real life this is a p channel device this is n channel device this is the source and drain are identical in this particular process so let us say this is source this is drain of a p channel device 
this is source and this is drain of n channel device. So, where this will go and where this will go for a CMOS inverter? This will go to VDD and this will go to ground and the, though I am not shown it, but these two connections will be internal. Okay, I do not need to separate, I mean whenever I make this mask for metal I will have connection between two drains. Okay. So, I do not have to really connect taking it out. Okay. So, then there is a separation has to be done between this and this. I want to make a contact, please look at I made contact somewhere here. This contact I did not push it here. I went up, open a window, put a stub there and went up. Okay. So, there is some mask which is to be designed every now and then where and that is why it is called back end process which can be decided after transistor process is ready then we decide for a given circuit what should be back end interconnects. Why it is called back end? Because at the end of device we are now deciding how to interconnect and therefore it was called back end. So, back end engineers jobs are not very good, they work too much on software like many tools are available, CAD tools, but they are the ones who make money. Okay, wohi cheez hai, usko thoda sa bhi connection dikha hai unhone. This is the source of P channel, this is the drain of N channel or maybe source, this is the source, this is the gate and uh, uh, one can take this contact up, up, this can get up, this can get up. On the surface all contacts can be made towards pads, okay. so we can create pad connections. So this is the final device we want to make and we have already done so far what? Isolation, we have not done anything I had, we have only made active areas where transistors are. So, what have we have done it? We have opened these areas so far. Okay. This is our isolation oxides, Fox, and as I say, there may be a P plus below this, N plus below this. So, now we have to need mass because for this P channel device, what implant I should do? N plus channel stopper should have N plus. For n channel device I should have P plus, so another mask, what I am doing here I should not do here, what I am doing here I should not do here, so another mask, so a channel stopper is not maskless, you need two masks to do that, okay. So there is also a catch in the whole system. So that is why he has not shown it, he is assuming uh, this doping is sufficient to take care, okay, but it is not true. Okay. This we are done, so I will just repeat. Yesterday we started with oxide, nitride, photoresist. First step yesterday, this is I am just repeating what I have actually drawn and shown you yesterday. This is 100 wafer, okay. Uh, silicon nitride was deposited, as I say, by LPCVD, and uh, I do not know how much he is talking of 80 nanometers, but it is okay, 800 Armstrongs, I said. I am still comfortable with Armstrongs than with nanos. So, just 10 times that 80 nanometer is 800 Armstrongs. This is low pressure CVD, we will look into this. This first oxide is thermally grown, okay. Then we have a first mask, and there was a pattern shown to you in which this was retained and the rest was etched out. Okay. Uh, once, of course, this uh, oxide can be removed or can be held. This was held because if I am doing channel stopper, I need something. Oh, I forgot that day. I am sorry. Maybe quickly, uh, one minute, I will come back to implants. Uh, you just, if you are drawn, you are drawn yesterday. Something which I forgot in hurry, but I think that is very important. Uh, one thing you have to understand when I am doing an implant. And there are number of atoms okay, of silicon. Uh, there is a possibility that if the ion which is you are passing like a boron which is smaller actually may not interact with anyone okay, and just go and go okay, till it somehow finds some dislocation or something where it hits. Okay. This is called channeling. Is that correct? This is called channeling. So, extra. So, uh, extra range is seen because it, atoms go in between like a corridor, you know, it just goes in no interactions. Okay. 
Now, this channeling has an issue to if I put a very thin oxide here, oxide has is not a crystalline material. So, what will happen? The ions will hit and will when they come out, they will not come into straight ones. So, they will actually get in different angles and therefore more probable to form a Gaussian profile. Is that clear to you? Is that why word clear? Why this oxide is retained? Because it dechannelizes the incoming ions. Is that clear? This thin oxide is dechannelizes the incoming ions. Because oxide is very thin, so most energy it can pass through, but it will still dechannel itself. Okay. So this is why the word which I was uh, figure which I was showing you. Is that okay? What is channeling? It is a corridor of atoms, periodic, you said it is periodic. If the gap is 1.62 and strong an ion is smaller, it can go straight. Okay. So, that such some ions may reach much deeper compared to the others. Okay. So, they may actually change the projected range. Okay. So, to do this normally thin oxides are retained. Okay. Someone asks, can you not, yeah I can H, I can always H it. When I was etching all others, I can etch that as well. Okay. Then you someone also asked that when you etch nitride, the etchant is same for oxide, HFH uh, is same for that. So, the way we do it, we do ion, uh, ionic etching or what we call as anisotropic etch. So, I can have what we call etch stop. As soon as the oxide starts, the etch rate goes down. Okay. Energies are so adjusted. Only nitride is etched out. So, there are methods in which oxide can be, in case there is no oxide, before you will have the second masking you have to do, you remove resist, put oxide and put again resist, so double masking, but that is costly. Okay. okay, so we are now ready for active area, then we did low cost as yesterday we said and uh, uh, then of course we strip the nitride layer after making low cost. And then we start the first process which yesterday uh, after this low cost has been made, you remove the resist, uh, this photo resist as well as you have removed the nitride. So, you have now a clean silicon surface okay, with isolating islands. Okay. These are active regions, the rest is thick oxide everywhere. Now, I use the first mask. I have already shown you I need a P well to create and channel device. Okay. So, I said fine, uh, I actually put a resist on this portion using this mask. If I am using a PPR, what mask I am using? Creel free, I want to retain this areas. So, light should not pass, which means dark area, this area should be dark on the mask, the rest should be clear. So, this is a clear field mask with a window of dark window which will retain these areas. So, I retain it since this is a resist, it is an excellent mask for any impurities. So, boron is implanted down and it will create a P implant below, okay, P implant below. Now, the typical dose which is required is 10 to power 13 per centimeter square and the energy is 150 to 200 kV it will typically yield to a final concentration of 10 to the power 17 okay, p wells, 10 to the power 15. If you use NPR that should be clear window, window should be clear and the rest should be dark. There is no, so that decide the dose. Now, this energy is also decided by the depth range you are looking for. Okay. Please remember where which one should have higher energy phosphorus or arsenic or boron N or P which has a larger range at same energy boron it is a lighter ion it will go deeper anyway okay. whereas phosphorus so if I implant the same depth then what should I do the implant energy for arsenic or phosphorus will be always higher than boron so this they show you they do not tell but this is done is simply because equivalent value they find out so that same well thickness are available. Okay. 
Okay, so first what is the first thing we did? We created an area, active area and in that we make a P well, okay, implant rather. Right now it is not a well, it is only implant there. Yesterday of course we have seen this SIT, STI sorry. So this is given in a, this so I just printed but do not use that, we have already seen that. Then we do a mask to make an N-well area. Okay. So what should I do there? There is an interesting name we give. Uh, the first mask was called P-well mask. The, for creating N-well, we, we actually have a mask which is called P-well minus mask. Okay. P-well minus mask. So wherever I want implant earlier, I do not want implant now. Wherever, and thick oxide anyway will block everywhere. So I am not worried about thick oxide area. So I just take a copy of that, is that clear and use the opposite resist. She is asking, is it okay? I just take the opposite of that complementary mask as they call and just use the other resist. So I can open this okay, or other same resist, okay, same resist. If I use complementary mask then I do not need resist to change or you change resist with the same mask also, okay, either way. So now this area is opened and this area is blocked. Now do a arsenic or phosphorus implants. Normally phosphorus implants are done for well, why? They can go deeper, arsenic is a shallow implanter or it has a lower diffusivity. So it will not go too deep, DT products are much smaller. So we must put deeper, if you want, put phosphorus. Okay, so this is also similar dose. Okay typically 10 to power 13 and look now, now just, I just tell you the phosphorus implant is done at 300 kV, where was boron done 150 to 200. So it is roughly two, and, 2 times or 1 and half times the earlier ones we do so that they come almost same depths. Okay. So and then I start annealing in oxygen to some extent or at least anneal in nitrogen for a long typical uh, this if you want depending on what is the dry, uh, time taken and temperature chosen by what method, what is the reason I am using some cycles, XJ, I want DT product so that I get so much XJ, so I, I have 2 root RP square plus 2 DT, so I adjust my DT product so that XJ is what I want, okay, XJ is what I want, okay. So typical values are shown here which is around 2 to 3 micron of junctions but uh, any value it can be lesser or larger depending on the technology node one is working at. The current technology node may be a less than a micron, 8000 8, 8, amstroms but uh, in 11 nanometers it will be even lower, okay. So we do not know what, what it is going to do. So after PL and well have been driven in by annealing, what is the advantage of this? It also anneals all damages, activates all uh, impurities and drives them in, okay. So this is a major step of creating PVL and NVL one and one go, okay. Okay, so you have now a active areas in which you have area for PVL, area for NVL where transistors are going to appear. In the PVL, I will get N channel device and in N well I will get a P channel device, okay. Now the next problem is we have been doing this often expression, okay this expression can be, re, maybe I can rewrite this expression. We also know for a, any transistor, MOS transistor VT for P channel device or N channel device is 5ms plus minus 2 phi f minus q ox by c ox minus plus minus q bulk upon c ox where c ox is epsilon ox by t ox where t ox is now gate oxide. QB is QNB, NB means either NA or ND, 
x d max x d max is under root of twice k s epsilon naught 2 phi f upon q n b. So, I know everything q ox is of course process dependent phi m s is also the metal which I use which I know anyway phi m s 2 phi f is 2 k t by q ln n a or n d phi n i square okay. sorry n i. So, I can evaluate the Fermi energy or Fermi potential I, I know q ox I know c ox and depending on the doping I can decide my threshold ok. So, depending on this. So, normally I have a p well whose con I, how much doping I was telling there 10 to power 17, but this may not be required or this may be smaller or larger depending on node you are looking for V t requirements. So, I must now put something additionally in the channel area which is essentially required for given V t value. Is that word clear to you? The n well p well dopings are not good enough to control the threshold of n channel and p channel devices. So, I will now use another implant of exact doping of my choice both in p well as well as in n well which will decide my threshold. This is called threshold adjust implant. What is it called? Threshold adjust implant. Is that clear to you? But why we still we are not go banking on the p well n wells because they are driven in their profiles are now very flat ones. So, I cannot decide on the channel region how much is accurately uniform doping there. So, I actually want to know what is V t which is decided by whom? By the technology you are told to design or he said this much current V g s minus V t. Now, you you I have designed all my circuit based on this current or so much g m. Now, you suddenly say no, no, no V t is 10 percent different or 20 percent different then my whole circuit may perform or may not at all ok. So, my worries are that I must get correct P t of course still it will not be correct but closer to correctness nothing is absolute in the process everything is statistical ok. So, after the n wells or p wells are done I now go for threshold adjust implant. Uh, let us say first I do it for n channel device. So, what area I should block? All p well areas uh, uh, sorry all n well areas where p device is to come should be blocked and please remember this we always show you only this. So, the other portions are open it does not matter because there will be what there elsewhere thick oxide. So, I, it does not really matter if I mask it or I do not mask it is that clear. But this window I must open because there is where implant is going to be performed. Is that clear? The rest area is anyway field oxide. So, implant does not go through. What is that thickness we have to adjust? For the highest energy implant, how much is blocking you want? Maybe 8 nines or 10 nines, ok. So, adjust your thickness of field oxide such that nothing goes through it in the below surface. Is that clear? That is why we other day showed you how to calculate how much blocking it can give a layer can give ok. Ok. So, now I open a p well area and I want to adjust uh, nothing will go below that. That implant was done prior to oxidation did you get the point? Impurities what you have already put there cannot be changed now is that point clear? Below oxide, whatever you have put, there is nothing can come out now. Oh, they are, they are not in oxide, the ions are not uh, ions actually, they will discharge through their bondings. So, that there will be randomness in that, and they will not contribute. And if they are away from the surface, they will not contribute to Vt. Fixed charges are only when it at attacks silicon in the or it is a dangling bond these ions are much fewer than available SiO SI bonds. So, in general nothing will pass through this and they will lose the charge and sit in the interstitial sites not contributing to anything 
Is that clear? Because that is an amorphous material, silicon dioxide is not crystalline. Is that correct? So, there is nothing much will except the fixed charges which occurs close to the interface, they are not in, inside the interface. Okay. Mobile ions move because they are charging them and you are asking them to move. Otherwise, ions will lose the charge as you put into the wafer at the end. So, they will sit somewhere without contributing to anything. Okay. okay, now I do a threshold adjust for this to protect the PMOS devices. Boron is okay. Now, you must remember since it is a P well, the implant is also P type. Why? Because it is an N channel device, the threshold is adjusted by P type doping. So, I do a boron implant somewhere in the well, okay, somewhere in the well and essentially whatever is Q implant I do divided by C ox is typically the uh, VT I can adjust at that point, okay. Is that clear? You are initially P well, so I know what is VT with P well do dopings, then I do implant and I know how much is additional VT I have got through which is my implant VT. Is that clear? So, it is called shift. I am actually shifting the VT okay, from the PL VT to channel VT. Okay. So, I adjust my VT of the channels. Okay. So, firstly I did it for what? For a in a PL means I am doing N channel this. So, I did boron. I use complementary mask or complementary resist with the same mask either way. You keep mask, same mask, then resist change, complementary mask, resist is same. So, I open this area and now what I implant? Arsenic. This is very important because now I do not want deeper things to go. So, I want very shallow implants. First, actually, uh, this I did not tell you. Every process we go through, there is a test wafers are there on every process. Okay. So, before we start the next process, we actually measure the last process what has happened. So, I will have a mass capacitors of every time and a junction device from every time, resistors of every time, every there is a test area on a mask. I keep monitoring test areas. Before the and I do not use that again same test area in the I will use the fresh so out of say Eight test, eight times I want testing. So it will be eight test wafers. Only one at a time I will take, and only that process I will measure, and then I will not add to that. And the rest next time I will use the second one. Is that clear to you? So this testing is done every process step. So I know VT is how much was with the P well. I have a mass capacitor for that. Okay, on my test. So I'll monitor that, and I have figured out. And this is not one test area. Actually, on a wafer, uh, each chip has at least five test areas. And on a wafer, you can see hundreds, ten by ten area or twenty by twenty. So many test chips are available. Test chips are kept in the corners on a wafer, top, bottom, this center. Okay. So five. So there are too many test areas available to you for testing. Okay. Even the final test, when we do, the whole circuit is available to me on the test. Like I use a flip flop many times. So, I will have each kind of flip flop available on the test area. So, I will actually monitor before circuit is tested because it is too costly to test full circuit. So, I will test every block. So, our process step keep adding test areas. And if you are fresh something, you add additional wafer to do some more test. Okay. Only one process step you want, you add some more extra step, extra process wafers. Some wafers are kept constant till end. So, that is why I say number of test wafers could be 8 to 20, depends on how many times you want to test. Okay. You can keep adding also additionally in between, okay. because now last step I have finished, I now want fresh from here the next process what changes. So, I can only add one more wafer, wafer with the test area. Okay. So, I keep adding test area, I uh, keep test wafers, and also I keep monitoring the combined ones and change ones. So, I know what has happened from the last step to now. Okay. So, this is always tested and only then, but this is normally first done by a CAD tool. I mean you are doing a supreme or a centuras kind of thing and you know roughly what is going to happen. Okay. 
but I do not just trust that result, I will actually test physically everything. Okay. All she does, you said you do when so much resistance, she will monitor every area of sheet resistances which are I am creating. Okay. You said doping, I will say I will measure four probe, I will find whether how much was actual doping gone there. Okay. So there is a test areas on every chip and every wafer, lot numbers and so many wafers are kept adding. So testing is during processing is very crucial for success. You just do not once do it and hope for the best, nothing happens, okay, then nothing will happen. Okay. Nothing will happen, no, no circuit will be seen. So this is very crucial in our whole process line that we keep monitoring what is happening okay. and we keep comparing with what our center has result and we say okay, so I actually modify center has result now, if I monitored something many times and I found this is the value I am not getting, so I will actually change the software there, I mean values there. And then the new values I will get from them and I'll, next process I will modify that. So it is a online modification can go. Of course, one standardized, hopefully even when test is done, but centralized is not used, then they know this will work. But standardization takes lot of time. Is that clear? So process standardization is a game. And but money is only earned if your process is standardized. Okay, then you have 200 wafer switch, all are well. Okay. Okay. So similar thing I did one for p-channel devices, uh, n-channel devices. Similarly, I did for p-channel devices. This is called threshold adjust implant. Please remember, mask this and mask five are complementary mask or complementary resist, whichever way. Same mask with different resist or say different mask with same resist, you can use it either way. Okay. So they are sometimes called minus mass, P plus minus mass, so P plus hai or phir minus kya, it is called complementary hai. Okay. You can also see here in the case of boron, how much was the energy? 50 to 85 kV, how much is uh, for the arsenic? 75 to 100, is that clear? So this energy adjustment is for similar depths in both cases, is that clear sir? I want same both sides, okay. so energy, I, I know energy is proportional to the depth range. So please this take from me that this energies are and doses are adjusted to make equivalence of both devices many times, okay, so that they are. I do not want VTN should be different from VTP, okay. There is no harm in actually having they different. But if I am making a CMOS circuit, I would not like the high and low values be different, okay. So I want transition should be similar for both P channel and N channel when it goes from higher charging and it, when it discharges, I want same, same process to happen. So I will always see to it that VTNs are same as VTPs. But a size I cannot do, so I know that mu is double or two and a half times. So I will actually sizing double the P channel devices or two and a half times just to maintain similarity of P device with N device. Is that clear? So this equality of circuit equivalence is always used in technology because they want equal everything from P or N. Okay. Okay. So so far we are done. We are still to do a transistor. We are still only on first implant creation. Then we, okay, then this thin oxide was removed because why we kept that thin oxide? Channeling, de-channeling, okay. Now we remove that, okay. And then I grow a, the most important process of whole mass transistor is creating a gate oxide. Of course, instead of gate oxide, it can be any high K or it could be nitride. What is the advantage of nitride over silicon dioxide? No, 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 no. Gate oxide, re, main gate replace kar raha hai. High K, it has almost double that of silicon dioxide, okay, 7. So dielectric constant is double that of silicon, uh, not double, 4, 3.9 and 7, but roughly double. 
whereas high K means really I want 16, 22, 28, so I may go for hafnium oxide, zirconium oxide, I may go for lanthanum oxide, I can move gallodium oxide, I, I may try many mixtures, tantalum oxide, I have many possibilities which I can try, okay. Uh, okay, so I agree of thin oxide and on that immediately, okay, this of course is an optional step dot, dot I have shown you. What kind of oxide it should be? Good oxide is which oxide? Dry oxide. Dry oxide is the best oxide, okay. But high K there is no dry oxide. So that is bad or good, whatever it comes, okay. But if you are doing SiO2 based, you always go for gate oxide with dry oxidation. Second reason, if as your technology scales, the thickness of oxide will also come down, okay. From earlier we have 400 Armstrong gate oxide when 5 micron process, then we went as we started going 0.25, we went for 40 to 70 Armstrong of oxide. And finally what had happened now that they wanted less than 5 Armstrong of gate oxide. Then only we look for high key because I cannot have one monolayer of silicon dioxide. So silicon or oxygen either. So I cannot create. So then I look for that capacitance value and say okay epsilon I can change, T I can change ratio. Okay. That that's for high key appeared. Otherwise nothing better than silicon dioxide. It's the ideal insulator for everything. Okay, so Abhi, then after this gate oxide, I deposited using process called low pressure CVD, LPCVD. We will look into this process later and uh, polysilicon is deposited. Uh, what is the reaction of poly will be? Poly is normally assumed through, uh, how do you create poly? Silane. So you have a silane which reacts, you should actually some way remove the hydrogen out of it. Yes, then what should I do? I have a SiS4 and I want hydrogen to go away. Can hydrogen kaise aata sa? Isko dissociate kaise kar sakte? Heat. You, that is cracking the silane means you heat the silane. And why it uh, then breaks? Because the according to gives free energy, the energy of formation becomes less than energy of this T delta S becomes higher. So it dissociates, okay. Is that point clear? So as simple as that we follow in making polysilicon depositions, okay. Uh, some people do two masks here and actually dope the poly right there. Is that clear? This poly itself can be doped by two masks. Why one this side mass, the other this side mass? So I can make P plus poly, N plus poly. But many a times this is not advised, okay, because anyway during the gate delineation I am going to implant for source drain. So I will prefer to use that rather than this. But there are processes or uh, books you will see where this state may be there. So you do not ask me why they have done it. No, they may have done it because they have pre doped the way. And that is very easy because that uh, if I want to dope a poly during this poly depositions, I will pass the phosphine gas for making phosphorus dope, arsine gas for arsenic dope and boron diborane for boron dope. So I deposition of boron dope glasses are much easier on the boron silicon by just CVD, okay. But I prefer not to do this as I am saying, but not that every company follows me. So I am not saying they, some people do this as well, okay. So I just showed you that he has also said either mass or unmasked polysilicon doping implant is performed. Now this is something as I say do it or do it. The only thing we worry that whenever I do implant on poly, uh, I want a very large uh, concentration of poly. Why, why I want to be heavier doped? High, it is a metal replacement. Okay, so I should be as conducting as possible. The best of whatever people say uh, 10 to 20 ohm per square is the only sheet resistance one can attain, never below 1 or 2 which is metal can give 10 to power minus 3 to minus 5 ohm per square. This cannot give below 10, okay. So all said and done, it cannot replace 
a metal. So, we will do some mischief, we will add some metal to it to form a silicide which will have better sheet resistance, okay. Okay, so uh, as I say this process right now assume only poly has been deposited. Some people may dope, some people may not, okay. So far so good, poly has been deposited on gate oxide but there are no transistors. So now first time we make another mask which is mask 6 to make actual gates. So what, what is essentially gate? Where Please remember gate is up to where poly, every poly region was below gate oxide. There was every poly region would have gate oxide below. So I somehow use the 6 mask with lithography as shown here, this is the resist and I etch poly from everywhere else, okay. But I do not etch thin oxide. Even if I etch, I do not mind, but for an implant, I would prefer to hold that, okay. Is that clear? Dechannelization is necessary, so I will keep this thin oxide. So, what uh, since I want a vertically exactly etching kind, so normally all liquid agents or uh, wet agents are isotropic in nature, they attack all sides. I want vertically down, so I do anisotropic etching, which is essentially what we call as dry etching, okay, or ion etching. So I create gate, what is this, the length of this is what is what it will be for the transistor, channel length okay and this second dimension which is not shown here in the in, inside, what will be that, the width of the transistor. Circuit people are only interested into W by L and that is it, so for them if I achieve this, thank you very much. Of course, they will also ask VT. They are, they are only looking for VT. No, they are looking for many things. They look for mobilities. Okay. What is mobility here okay, at the surface? That is very important for them. Mu C ox. Okay. So, all our technology is transferring to device performance. And since device is going to give me circuit performance, technology is connected to circuit performance, which is our ultimate aim. This whole processing is not ultimate aim. This is all done for making a circuit go, okay. So, ulta man soshna ki ye kya hai, a thing has happened like this. There was a time when designers used to say, I want this and technology used to say, well, this much I cannot do for you, okay. I cannot give this mobility, I cannot adjust the threshold so much, I cannot give anything of this kind. So, then the designers used to crib. Oh, you know, you are not able to give me what I want. I want 1 million transistors. He said, no, I cannot give more than 100,000 transistors. The things have changed in 2005 or onwards. Now we have number of transistors available of uniformity in billions. Find a system which needs that, okay. So the question is now opposite. How much designers can think, okay, system designers? Then the device circuit designers, so first system in a switching it, so device kya switching it. Then why buy crib anything? Oh, your process, process aya ka sawal. So why are we improving process still is unknown to me. I mean this, why Intel wants to go for 7 nanometers is a fun. But they are thinking that they will use their microprocessor design to much higher depth. But who needs say, let us say 10 gigahertz microprocessor, for what? I don't know, I don't know, except for a video game. Other than that, you do not need anything actually, okay. But otherwise, in real life, you do not need 7 nanometer process anyway. Most circuits which you will build or system you will build in 45 nanometer is majority of circuits can go. 80 percent circuits will require no more than 45 nanometer. Some 20 percent may require 16 nanometer or 22 nanometers or maybe 1 percent will require 7 nanometer. So are this invention going on for processes only for the sake of that 1 percent? In my thinking is like this, okay. This may not be agreed by companies, but you can see I am right because most of the companies for foundry lines are closing because that is what they keep thinking, oh, ho jayega, hota kuch nahi hai. 
So right now my course of course as a course person I will keep saying technology is the only thing but in real life it is the system designers which actually should play a better role okay, because they are the ones who will say okay I want so many functions to be done in so much time frames then only I will require to do something, nothing is happening. So please uh, when you do the next courses you pay enough attention there because they are the ones who should drive us. Technology kya hum aapko kuch bhi dehenge. Anything you want I can do now. Okay. But their problem comes that oh I do not know what to use with. Okay. RAM hai. Thik hai they say L2 RAM uh, cache will require say 8K. Then they say no I want 64K. Okay 64K diya. No no 1 MB. Okay 1 MB diya. Ab, ab, you do not know how many exchanges you need on a processor more than 1 MB. You do not have an architecture which requires that much exchanges. So, just L2 badane se fayda kya hai? Aap edhi bahar DRAM pe aana hai, aapko ya hard disk pe aana hai, to phir usko badane ka kitna fayda, kitna exchange karna chahi? Kitna register dalna chahi? Just because you have register, you keep adding registers. Aisa actual architecture people have not come out with anything great so far. Van Newman ne jo bola, why we are coming? So, something different unless happens, do not blame technology, technology has reached its peak and nothing is stopping them. Okay. Maybe I will, uh, I do not know the time, what is this LED business has come, 90 mein banaya gaya, ab kyo importance aga uska. Okay. So now once I delineate the gate, gate delineation means sizing W by L for the gate is called delineation of the gate. Okay. So I have delineated the gate. Once I delineated, I remove the resist. Of course, the actual figure hai, Stanford University ke koi PhD thesis se plumber ke student ki. Okay. Uh, you can see this is the gate. He has shown. Okay. This is the ACM picture. Okay. Is that okay? Now there are few things more are important in 16 mass process. Now we use another mass seven actually to do what we call source strain extensions and this word is very important. This was required because we said please take it wireless local loop, always create noise. So now we want that many of the mass transistors have when we did for scaling down to a lower technology nodes, we figured out that the channel length became so high, uh, so small and the voltage did not scale. Okay. There is no voltage scaling going on same as channel length scaling. So the field across the source drain and across the oxide is incre has increased because it is not one to one scaled. Okay. If it is one to one scale I do not need anything, I just reduce everything, fine it should perform. That is what we earlier did but now it cannot be scaled down. So we figured out that uh, if your channel length is too small and the length being smaller and voltage is not scaling, the electric field even lateral as well as vertical is very high. Okay. Where is the maximum field in the channel? Maximum potential is at the drain. Okay. So the maximum field occurs at drain. So carrier starting from source get accelerated to its maximum velocity, generally saturated velocity to near the drain. And since they are the most energetic carriers and the oxide is thin enough, the electric field is large, some of the electrons or carrier, either carrier can tunnel through this oxide on the gate. Okay. This is a short channel effect which is very, very dominant effect. Is that clear to you? This is very, very dominant effect, high this high energy uh, tunneling going through. So the barrier is typically of silicon dioxide is known and if your energy is high enough it can climb the barrier or it can go through the oxide if the oxide is thin by tunneling. This process is called thermionic field emissions. Okay. So a TFE can add to your carriers going into this. What is the problem carriers go into oxide? They will shift the VT, charge goes there sitting right there. Okay. If VT shifts, so everything shifts. So I am worried that it's no tunneling happens. 
there is a model which one of my student created is called lucky electron model. How do you decide that how many carriers will go? So there is a probability theory which we created then which says that okay this is likelihood to this. This method is used where in ROMs, flash ROMs, E, e square ROMs or E ROMs, this is exactly what we are trying, we are actually trying to push and we do not want them to come back. So we put another gate and no connection, so uh, let us go there, okay. So float kar diya usko. So that is a ROM, flash ROM, a flash of course to erase but ROMs, E ROMs, okay. So I now do some kind of a, I figured out at the drain end and since transistors are normally symmetric, why they are called symmetric? Source and drain are normally interchangeable. In some structures we now insist it should not be that, but otherwise they are normally interchangeable. So whatever source for this device, if I, eh, this will be source, or this will be drain. So there is nothing great about it. So we find at the edges I must have lighter doping. Why I should have lighter doping? Because uh, if a normal PN junction if you see, the fields are, if your uh, doping is smaller, the depletion weight spreads because you know depletion weight is inversely proportional 1 upon n. So if n is smaller, then the depletion weight spreads. So the electric field also spreads. So near the surface, electric field is not very maximum, okay. It actually goes within the depletion layer. This is therefore you need drain region, closer to drain area should be lightly doped than the drain itself. That is called LDD, lightly drain, do, dope drains. Okay. So this process is LDD creation. Okay. What is LDD? Lightly dope drain. And why do we need it? I want to avoid short channel effects. Okay. I want to avoid short channel effects. In 5 micron process or 3 micron which I worked in 70s, I never used to think this because the channel length was 5 micron voltages were 5 volt and everything was well within my control. So there is another implant has been done. Now one interesting thing feature you should see, poly is open, okay. The resistor is only on this side. So the whatever implant you are going to do now will also get implanted into poly, poly is open actually for implant. However, this is very lightly doped. So poly is not really changing its pro better property. It's still highly doped, uh, highly resistive. Hai because the which is this implant? It should be lighter implant. Why? I want impurities to be smaller num in number because I want lightly doped. So I actually make a well uh, n region, uh, p regions here. Okay, sorry, n regions there, which is light because n channel device you are in a p well so you made an n implant and what is importance is this you must say implant will always follow the edges okay implant will follow always say ions so it will go straight so they will come here they will come here so this is called self alignment what is the self alignment let us say during the last mass when this gate was delineated this shifted left but the next implant will still follow the edges. So source drain will be always be available to you. Only difference will happen is the region areas may change, okay. But at least transistor will always, in our earlier process we used to first make source drain and then used to make gate on that. So I must overlap my gate on source drain so that otherwise there is some area where there is no gate oxide. So this is called self alignment, wherever gate is there from the edges impurities will go down, okay, ions will go down. So that is the biggest advantage this process allows, it is called self alignment. There will be registration errors, this may shift all of them, but so all the implant still will follow the edges of whatever poly it has and therefore it will always, gate will be always aligned with the source drain, is that clear? The, what is the biggest advantage that provides the capacitance at the corners is smallest there and parasitic capacitance reduction is speed improvement, okay. So that is a very crucial requirement for high speed circuits. Okay. Now having done LDD for n channel device, what should I do for now? Use the opposite mask or opposite resistor whatever it is 
and do same thing for P channel device in the N well. So, there is a thin P regions created which are going to be source drain, but these are lightly doped. What should be the resistance of the or resistivity of the actual source drain? It should be very low because I want the contact resistance to be low, but this is very high. So, I cannot use this as a source drain. Is that point clear? This is only lighter dope. The problem start now this is where that word spacer came. I want only at the edges okay, doping to be light. But the rest regions I want it to be heavier doped source drains. Okay. So, I must now protect some regions here where N plus or P plus diffusion implants will not come. Have you got the point? This is N let us say P. So, if I protect some part sideways and then do implantation heavy implants then the small portion which is called spacer below that heavier implant cannot go and below is only lighter implants. Okay. So, lighter drain or source can be created and the rest region I can create heavier doped source and drains. This means spacer is required to create an LDD. This may be last slide for the day, then we will come back again. So, now I to create a spacer and from where the spacer should be? from the side wall because you know that is one which will block the implant next implant. So, I want a extra outside covering gate which space spacer covers actually gate regions all around in fact okay. and the then when I implant that area will not receive the next implant below that it will be only lightly drop regions. Okay. So, spacer is required for creation of LDD structures. What is the disadvantage of spacer? Any spacer and when you put a LDD, the resistance of source drain will increase. Is that clear? So, spacer thickness is very, very crucial. How much R I will be tolerating at LDD regions is a very crucial effect because remember channel resistance will be the smallest. Why? Inverting, you are pushing huge uh, charge on the gate you are inverted out, but source drain N plus, P plus they are also very low, but which is the maximum resistance will come? The space below region of spacer. So, spacer weights are very, very crucial in decision of the space uh, speeds of the device. Is that clear? <coughs> Typically, if you want, I may show you there will be R N plus let us say, then R N, then R channel, then R n and then R n plus. This is drain, this is source. This is very low, these two are also very low, heavily doped, okay. but this LDD parts which is decided by spacer bits, okay, they may decide your actual speed of the circuit. So, the spacer has advantage of doing what? The removing short channel effect, but it has created compensation of speed. Okay. So, one has to keep worrying how much speed, that is why that 10 gigahertz is not able, you know, I try something I actually do not reach there. Okay. I have to give speed if I want to improve device, first I must have LDD, why? Because other if device does not work, held to it, you know, then what, why are we doing all this? So, device has to work. So, LDD I need. Okay. So, something I must do tricky which will reduce the spacer thick, I mean whatever doping there. Can I slightly change this resistance LDD? At the edge I do not want to change, but slightly closer or below I can add something. How can I add? I will show you a figure. This is my source drain and this upper portion is LDD. I want the below portion should be heavily doped. That means parallel resistance to above. Okay. What can I? If I do a tilted implant, I can go below. So halo has to be created. Okay. 
So that is how we can adjust our resistances, but halo will require another mask and also another damage at the uh, spacer. Spacer if it does not stop it well then it will also create its own problems, okay. Spacer thickness cannot be uniform, the variation is 10 percent and the 10 percent variation actually changes 100 percent speed variations. See you then next Saturday.